I called well, it, Michael, didn't I? Well, you said it was a big game. I said particularly if the Mets won, well, it's Mets, a big deal. Not only do they win, you know, as Aaron Boone so aptly put it, didn't they? Uh, they kicked the Yankees' teeth in. They did. So, you know. Yeah, they they kind of, well, yeah, listen, maybe the judge home run changed that. Almost punked. Like, almost. Like, you know, you walked in there and, and it was 9 2 in the first game until. 9 that, 1. That, well, not, you were about 9 yeah. 1 and then the 9 with the Grand Slam, 9 3, and the Grand Slam made it 9 7, but it really wasn't a competitive game. And then yesterday, you could say that the. Um, that you could say the rain delay might have hurt the Yankees. I don't look at it that way. I look no. at the fact that Heel didn't give you much and their bullpen we just got smacked around. The Yankees scored nine runs in the two games. Mm -hmm. Judge drove in seven of them. Yeah. So it, it's a two man offense right now. That's it. And are, are they free falling? Um, they're not playing well. And if you ask me, are they going to break out of it? Well, I mean, they're fortunately in, in, um, in Toronto tonight. For a four game set, Toronto has been dreadful. So they're they're playing a team that is also not playing well. But I will put it this way: every game the Yankees win, until somehow this gets straightened out, is going to be a very difficult task. Their offense after the top three is non-existent. Um, yesterday, J.D. Davis, who was designated for assignment mm -hmm. by the Oakland Athletics, was batting cleanup. Right. And this was after Glaber Torres the was day batting before, cleanup. Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres has been benched. Uh, probably benched again tonight. Uh, Luis Hill has now had two awful starts in a row. Um, there's very little to hang your hat on right now. And it's not because you know, they're choking. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, it's because the, the competition got better. No, because no. the Yankees were as good as any team in baseball. They could have beaten any team in baseball. But they, it's, this, this started rolling when Soto got hurt his arm and he missed the entire Dodgers series. So there was two out of three. Um, that wasn't good. Then the Orioles come into town. Mm -hmm. Uh, Judge, Judge is out game, for a yeah. game and a half, so he gets knocked out in the fourth right. inning of the second game. They lose two out of three of the Orioles. Then they absolutely get punked by Boston. Mm -hmm. Nine stolen bases in one game, which might have uncovered a real problem for the Yankees. If And I said at the time, if you play an athletic team, it's going to be interesting to see when they play the Cincinnati Reds starting next week after the Toronto series, the Reds run like crazy. What's going to happen there? I mean, the best way to stop a running game is don't let people get on base. So. Right now, they've lost four straight series. Uh, the Mets are red hot. The Mets are the best team in baseball during the month of June. I believe they're 15 and six in the 21 games, and they have finally gotten to 500. And the Yankees, fortunate for them that before last night the Orioles had lost five in a row. Now the Orioles won last night, and so it's just one game separating them. You, you, you know, Yankee fans are going to say, well, you have to right the ship. And, you know, already when you see on social media, people starting to blame Boone. Well, let me tell you what. You can you could bring back Joe Torre. You could bring back Casey Stengel, Joe McCarthy, Billy Martin, any combination of Yankee managers you want. Put them all together in a brain trust in the dugout. You can't do anything with this team that can't hit. That's not Aaron Boone's fault. Now, do you think Aaron Boone wants to... Bad J.D. Davis cleanup. He's batting him cleanup because they have no other option. You think he wants to have uh, Glaber Torres back cleanup? No, they have no other option. Uh, John Carlos Stanton's injury is gigantic. Gigantic. And although he wasn't producing much, uh, Anthony Rizzo's uh, injury is, is enormous because at least he balances the lineup and there's a threat there that maybe he could go off on a run. But D.J. LeMay, who looks lost, uh, Glaber Torres in the middle of being benched. The pitching now is, is returning to the mean. Uh, the, the bullpen hasn't been good. They've been worn out. So I, I think you're in, Don and Peter, for a really tough stretch of baseball. Do I think they're going to lose every game? Absolutely not. Every single game, though, is going to be an absolute war to win. Nothing's going to come easy. And again, the more we get into it with the bottom of the lineup so anemic, teams with any kind of brain are not going to pitch to Aaron Much Judge. The thing. And, and the scary thing for not just Yankee fans, but just baseball fans in general, 
Judge is, I think, a, a tick higher pace-wise than he was two years ago yeah. when he broke the American League record. He's, he's not breaking the record if things don't change. He's not going to be pitched to. He's got 30 home runs before July, but if this continues, Michael, when is he going to get an opportunity to hit a home run? Well, here's how. Here's when. Like yesterday, he hit it when it was seven nothing. Pete, the teams will pitch to him if they're getting right. blown out. Right, right, and then they might be getting blown right. out with the, with the way right now mm -hmm. some of the starting pitching in the bullpen has been. But I, I think it hurts him because we've ne we've seen the Barry Bond effect, right? We saw Buck Showalter walk him with the bases loaded. But th th there may be situations, guys, where you might see Soto and Judge both be walked. If, if you're not going to have anybody that can hit after Judge, why would you let either of those two burn you? If, well, you, like, if you're going to keep with Soto second and Judge third, and you get into any inning, probably not the first inning, but if you get into an inning where they're with the leadoff batters, and if you get the first out, you might walk Judge and Soto just to be able to not have them get a big hit. But, Don, that's what the Mets did in both of the games. The Yankees lost the games in the first inning. They had the bases loaded, nobody out in the, on Tuesday. Right. Three straight strikeouts. They had the bases mm -hmm. loaded and one out right. yesterday, and Verdugo hits into a double play. He's killing them, I too. mean, so God. they, if you want one glimmer of hope for the Yankees, the last two at-bats, and you can say garbage time at-bats, Verdugo looked more like Verdugo. Well, the, he had two base hits. Well, the first double play last night he hit, he hit it hard. hard. Yeah, um, but boy, it just it just killer, right? You're slumping. Eighty and now double you're, plays. And now you're hitting into double plays, and, and it just right now they look a shell of themselves because because they are. And, and also, let's not just sit here and talk about the Yankee struggles. Let's sit here and talk about and, and celebrate the Mets because the Mets have really turned things around. You know, you want to give Grimace the, uh, the credit, whatever the case may be. The thing is, their bullpen is weak. Their starting pitching is not great. But you know what? Their offense is oh. going to carry them to victory. That's a real... I mean, Harrison Bader's having a good year. He's batting ninth. So that's a really circular lineup. So they can do some damage. Are they going to overtake the Braves? I, I doubt it. I think their pitching is going to end up hurting them. Maybe Senga comes back. But I give Mendoza credit for keeping them together when they had that 10 and 25 yeah. stretch. And they, 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 they're playing with great confidence right now. And one of the reasons I thought they could compete at the beginning of the season is I thought they would hit. And Martinez has been a tremendous addition. Lindor, uh, say what you want about his starts historically and all that. He's going to go to the All-Star game. He's going to break that streak of not being an All-Star as a Met. He's hitting. You know, Alonso's got 16 home runs. He's never going to hit for big average, but, you know, he's good. But the big difference, Michael, is when you have Alvarez behind the plate, they don't lose. That's insane. And he, the, the kid could flat out hit. This was the reason he was called up two years ago because of his bat. Now he's a legit but, catcher, legit defensive catcher, calls a great game. That that's that's a missing art right there to be able to have that kind of production. And Michael will tell you when the Yankees had great catching, whether it was Posada, whether it was Thurman Munson, they won. You look at the Mets when they get production on a catcher, Gary Carter, Mike Piazza. I'm not gonna put Alvarez up there yet, but you're getting that kind of production behind the plate, you're gonna have a good season. But but Michael, have you? We were looking. You were off, I think. And at the time, we, I'm never off either. It's I weird. know it's weird. Yeah, but especially during the summer. But but you were. And at the time we looked, and it was the sample size was like 20 games. The Yankees pitchers' ERAs were were like two points lower with Alvarez behind the plate. Is Mets it, pitchers. I mean Mets. Sorry. Right. How often is there that big a change? And I, I know pe I know pitchers have their preference, but he can call that good a game. Well, I mean, he he's got great preparation, and if you remember Max Scherzer last year, I mean, this is a grizzled veteran that's going to the Hall of Fame. He loved pitching to Alvarez. So one of the reasons they didn't feel comfortable bringing him up right away because they didn't think he was a good defensive catcher. He's proven them wrong. I mean, he, he he's not Johnny Bench back there with his arm, but he calls a great game. So he's a really intelligent young man, and the pitchers love pitching to him. And then to be and then they batting win over all 300, the time when he they, plays. they just win. They win all the time when he plays. And you look at the difference when the, when he doesn't play, uh, it's amazing. And, and you got to give Mendoza credit for moving Lindor to the leadoff spot. Different player in the leadoff spot. Doesn't seem to have the, the same anxiety and um, angst batting third where he feels he's got to drive right. and runs. Now he's setting the table. Right. He opened up the game with two doubles right. in his first two at-bats. So... Things look good for them. It's going to be interesting because the Astros are hot now, too. Let's see how they play this week against no, the Astros. No, I mean, they won seven in a row, the Astros, which, which I think is also scary for the Yankees, too, because even though the Yankees played them well at the beginning of the season, this seems to be a different Astros team, and if they have to be somebody you have to face in the postseason, that could end up being also, a problem. Also, you want something else that's scary? 
Uh, the Red Sox now are eight games back in the loss column from the Yankees. <laughs> right? they, they were in another stratosphere hey, away. This is why we say it's early. Uh, and listen, I get beat up too. There were 11 games under 500, and I said you should be open to sell. But then I also said, show me something. The Mets have showed me something. And now you're seeing what I was high on going into the year, that this team should be able to hit. And they should have the ability, Michael, to be able to add some arms if they have to. And if they get Senga back, that is, what, he finished seventh in the Cy Young last year? In his first year here in the States. So there's every reason to believe that if he's able to come back, that he's going to be a contributor to possibly a run. And by the way, the Red Sox are now seven games back in the loss column behind the Yankees and the Orioles. So the Yankees and the Orioles have 30 losses and the Red Sox have 37. But the Yankees are set up to right the ship, although they got into their hotel yesterday at 4.30 in the morning in Toronto. Or this morning. I got to tell you. I, I don't, uh, and Toronto is the last place. So. I don't know how. I guess the schedules are the schedules, right? Mets have off because they're not going to play a four-game series against the Astros. But how do you have... They, they, then they can't play a day game, Mets Yankees, right? That would be counterproductive, right? To cross a border and play the next day, uh, it, because it adds to the for people that don't know, even for a, a professional team like the Yankees, one, but with, even with the Rangers, it still takes time to go through customs. It's a it's a pain. It, you get in late. Now it's not a day game today, but uh, it's they really do a disservice that when you have to cross a border and play the next day, especially with a wrong long rain delay. I mean, what was the first out? What time was the first the, the last out last night? Mm. They didn't come back until ten ten after the rain delay. And that was in the bottom of the fifth. It was about eleven thirty or twelve, something which, like which, that. Which isn't bad considering, but still, well, we're, we're, we're wheels up. Probably about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, probably later than that. Oh, well, because it's a short flight, so they get into the hotel at four thirty. Now, what I've always seen, I don't know why this happens. Like even when you go to West Coast trips and you're exhausted and you have to play, they always play well the first game. Mm. Maybe it's on adrenaline, and then the next game is when the fatigue hits. But think about it: you get into your hotel room at four thirty, so. If you're waiting for your luggage, and the players don't do that, they might have the luggage stay down there and they just go to bed. If you want to sleep eight hours, players really take a lot into their sleep. It's important. You know, that's been drilled into people. Um, If you sleep eight hours, uh, I mean, what are we talking about? You you have no day. You're going right to the ballpark. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they perform again. They're facing a bad team, a team that's falling apart as well. The team whose closer is out. Um, They're talking about playing, trading Vladimir Guerrero. It's time for the Yankees to right the ship, and you could right the ship in Toronto. Now, if they go into Toronto, we'll talk about this on, on Monday next week, if they go into Toronto and lose three out of four, I mean, that, that's some serious stuff. No, oh, it's another series loss. What is it, four straight series? Four straight lost? after having three the previous 22 series. Right. So, uh, it, it's, it has not been good. That was Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers.